This is Ranger. He's an explorer who ventures around the world looking for mysterious creatures. To get to his destinations, he has his own personal plane. It has cool details like these engine cylinders on the front, and on the sides there are some storage compartments for his gear like this camera that he uses to document his discoveries. Inside you'll find a steering wheel and enough room for him to fit with his backpack on. For his first adventure, Ranger is headed to South America where he'll be tracking down a mysterious creature, a black panther, which is the name given to jaguars and leopards that have this rare color variation. This particular jaguar is ferocious, hunting down and killing the locals' livestock. So to help him on his journey, Ranger sought the help of John Thunder, the most famous LEGO adventurer of all time. He's been around the world and has past experience in the Amazon jungle. I began by laying down a winding trail that I began to cover with a ton of dense foliage and trees. As Ranger, Johnny, and the rest of the crew traveled into the forest, their first obstacle was these thorny vines blocking their way. But Marcus used this hatchet to make quick work of it. However, not all of the plants are that harmless. Turning the corner, this man-eater gobbled him up whole. As they continued deeper into the forest, Ranger used his video camera to capture some footage of the wildlife of the jungle. As a bonus fact, the Amazon is so packed with plants and animals that it's estimated to contain 10% of all the species on Earth. Getting hungry, the crew stopped at this banana tree to have a quick snack, but as soon as they started eating, a group of wild monkeys came bounding down the trail, attacking Milburn. Thankfully, Laura was able to scare them away with a stick, but Milburn was so injured that he couldn't continue the journey. The next challenge in the Amazon was a waterfall, which I built up using a ton of clear slope pieces that I attached to this rocky ledge. I then sprinkled in some more clear pieces in the river to make the water look bubbly. To cross the waterfall and river, the group will have to travel across this treacherous rope bridge, which is built using a bunch of arm pieces from Star Wars battle droids. Drawing on his past experience with rope bridges, Johnny Thunder was the first to cross the rickety plains. But as Lara was crossing, a caiman alligator swam up the river. The boards began to creak underneath her feet, and suddenly, she broke through and was snatched up by the predator who swam away with her screams echoing through the rainforest. As Ranger ran across the bridge, the last of it collapsed into the river. On the other side, they discovered ancient ruins that in spite of being hundreds of years old, were mysteriously well preserved. As they approached the stairs, they didn't realize the black jaguar was silently watching them from above. Leaping down, before he could react, it dove to attack. Mustering his courage, Ranger tackled the jaguar. Regaining his composure, Johnny Thunder got back into the brawl. With a mighty punch, he knocked the jaguar into the rapids. Believing they were safe, the explorers entered the ruins to find spiders and cobwebs, along with a trap door that had killed a trespassing soldier hundreds of years ago. There was a chest of ancient gold too, but more importantly, on the walls they discovered the armor of a jaguar knight, a real type of warrior from the Aztec civilization. Long ago, this knight had traveled away from his home and deep into the Amazon to begin a new clan, and to this day, his jaguar companion has guarded it. Speaking of which, they suddenly heard the jaguar's roar. Running from the ruins, they left out and swung on vines and then ran all the way back out of the jungle. After documenting the black jaguar of the Amazon, Ranger flew to the Arctic where he met a group of the local Inuit people. Living in some of the coldest places on Earth, they wear the pelts of various animals, such as seals, caribou, and even polar bears. On their hunts, they create igloos for shelters using large blocks of snow and ice. This one is large enough for minifigures to crawl inside where they can get some rest from the cold. The Inuits were even generous enough to share some stew with Ranger. He traveled here after hearing rumors of a mountain yeti, and he wanted to see the proof. They told Ranger how it came into their village and attacked them. Thankfully, the Huskies were able to defend them and ran off the monster. Now Ranger wants to track it down to see for himself. Agreeing to help him, two Inuit men and Ranger used dog sleds to travel up the mountain. Along the way, they tracked the Yeti's footprints and markings that were left in the snow. They even stopped to teach Ranger how to ice fish. After reaching the base of the mountain, the Inuits left Ranger to complete the journey himself. The terrain was treacherous. The wind and snow blew against him, but he was determined. Coming to a cliffside, he used these ice picks to climb. However, with one wrong swing, he caused an avalanche. Digging himself out, he continued the climb. 
Making his way across the mountain, he came upon a family of polar bears, and pulling out his camera, he took the opportunity to film these endangered animals in their natural habitat. They were eating fish and taking shelter in this cave, and for some reason, there was even a crate of Coca-Cola they were drinking. As he continued his search for the Yeti, Ranger found a narrow path in the mountain leading up to its peak, and he knew that would have to be the next place for him to look. After using his ice picks again, he arrived up at the top. However, he didn't find anything at first, but suddenly, the ice beneath his feet began to crack, and before he could do anything, he crashed into the Yeti's hidden cave, disturbing not only her peace, but also her child's. In terror, Ranger saw a man frozen in the cave's walls. Snapping out his bullwhip, Ranger scrambled to safety before the Yetis could react. Realizing the Yeti couldn't jump that high, Ranger snapped a photo of the beast, giving irrefutable evidence of its existence. With his journey in the Arctic complete, Ranger's next journey would be down to the depths of the Mariana Trench, the deepest place on Earth, full of the unknown. Recently on the surface, two fishermen had been on their boat sailing along. They were minding their own business, when from out of the deep sprung a giant red Tentacle. Barely escaping with his life, the fisherman clung to a piece of his boat until he was rescued by a passing ship. As he told the story, he described a giant red octopus that was larger than his entire boat. Its eyes were bulging, and its long tentacles had suction cups that had torn the boat to shreds. Hearing all of it, Ranger knew he had to investigate, but venturing to the bottom of the ocean would require a submarine. He commissioned one with all of the features he would need, four high-powered propelling motors, dome lights mounted on top of it, and maneuverable arms that were capable of collecting samples from the environment. This claw uses clone trooper blasters as fingers. The top is removable for easy access to the interior, where you'll find deep sea radar dishes and pressure gauges, along with scanners detailing the submarine's condition. There's additional scuba gear, as well as a control module for guiding the ship and its arms. And with the submarine complete, Ranger was ready to dive into the depths of the ocean. I started the ocean with a bunch of blue plates as a water background, along with tan bricks on the ocean floor to give it some depth and variety. The next thing I did was add a ton of plant life to the ocean floor. I used these hot dogs to make a sea anemone where Nemo and Marlin live. While making all of the other plants, I tried to use a wide variety of parts in a lot of different shapes to help make the ocean floor feel exotic and otherworldly to give it a cool, mysterious vibe. There's also this reference to SpongeBob that I had to include. I also grabbed this Black Panther 2 set, which has this awesome jaw build that I can only imagine belongs to some kind of megalodon. As Ranger dove down to the ocean floor, he was amazed by all of the different plant life and animals. He used the claw to to collect some before he decided to exit the submarine to see everything up close. Swimming around, he took in all of the sights, and even went for a ride on the back of a manta ray. The next thing he discovered was this shipwreck. Inside of the ship's skeleton, he found the remains of the captain, along with his last trunk of treasure. Just as he cracked it open, he was flung across the ocean floor by none other than the giant octopus. As he tried to swim away, it thrashed him straight into his submarine. He closed the hatch just in time as it wrapped its slimy tentacles around the ship with so much pressure that it began to collapse. But as he started up the ship, the dome lights flashed forth, temporarily blinding the octopus and scaring it away, giving him his chance to escape. For today's final destination, Ranger is traveling to an American campground, which isn't as exotic as some of the other locations, but is one of the first places where so many of us were given the chance to explore nature. I started by laying down a cobblestone sidewalk, and then collected every dark green piece in my collection to give it a unique look. I then built a campground visitor center, inside of which you'll find a worker and cash register, along with with a fish mounted on the wall over the door. There's a rack of items campers can buy, and one of those cooler bins that sells all the best kinds of ice cream. Above that, there's some other snacks. The roof clicks into place and fits together in a satisfying way. Outside, there's the camp's welcome sign, along with some smaller ones showing some of the activities. Ranger chose this campground because recently people had been reporting sightings of Bigfoot. Upon arriving, he filmed some of the local wildlife, like this bear that helped itself to some snacks. He saw some other animals as well, but nothing out of the ordinary so he decided to dig a bit deeper by talking to some of the campers. They told him it had all started the night before. They had begun the night by roasting some hot dogs over the campfire, and after that had gathered around to tell each other ghost stories. Before going to bed, they used this telescope to look up at the stars. In the middle of the night, Lisa had woken up to hear a sniffing sound coming from outside of the tent. There was some more rustling around, and then her tent began to shake before she decided to make a run for it. After hearing the story, Ranger had an idea. Since the creature had been sniffing, he thought that maybe it had been after the hot dogs, so he picked one up and began to set up a trap. He set his cameras on tripods to capture the entire thing. After a few minutes, they heard sniffling and rustling as Bigfoot approached the hot dog. Right as he stepped on the X, Sean dropped the counterweight and Bigfoot was captured. As 
Bigfoot hung there barking out like a dog. Ranger had an even better idea. Picking up the hot dog, he gently offered it to Bigfoot. And from that day forward, he used hot dogs to train Bigfoot as his companion. And this made him realize that maybe the real treasures from all of his journeys were the friends he had made along the way. Subscribe or Ranger will sick Bigfoot on you. And like for a part two. And until next time, see you later.